Uh, and I have a question about, well, we can have this blue thing in the background because mm -hmm. I will not use the uh, presentation. I was only, I needed, I wanted to, to show some web pages. It's the only thing I need the computer. Uh, is it working there? Maybe like that better? So, okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, my, my name is uh, Miguel Ganso, uh, and I, uh, I work at the Jack Members Bank here in Sweden. Uh, in, uh, in the morning, I think uh, there has been a presentation uh, of the Swedish uh, Jack and how it is working in Sweden and why and which is our, our, our ideological points and, and economy and, and practice how we work. Uh, in this session, uh, I will talk uh, about an international perspective on ethical banks uh, and uh, well, my, why I'm here to present that is that my role in JAC, I work partially with, the, with popular education, which I will come to the point on why we are a bank that is working with popular education in Swedish folk building. And, uh, but partially I'm also working with the international relations of this uh, Swedish cooperative bank, which is JAC. Uh, we are only uh, working in Sweden, Mostly, we have some international members, but it's very, very few because the main uh, characteristic of our banks, like to, to the possibility to have loans or the possibility to participate in the democracy of the bank, is very limited to Sweden and to the Swedish language. So, we are working in Sweden mostly, but uh, we want from the beginning, from our status, the Stuttgart. Uh, we have like the, the purpose of uh, spreading our uh, industry ideology or industry view on banking uh, abroad, and that's why we have uh, uh, these uh, international activities of coordinating the, the international relations and mostly answering to the people from other countries that want to start with similar projects. Thanks. Uh, I want to, to my, I want to start with uh, introducing my, my connection with uh, with Jack with uh, with an ethical bank. Uh, I well myself I, I was studying mathematics that's why I am my academic background uh, and parallelly I was active in the fair trade movement uh, in the year 2000 and 2002 or something like that uh, and through the, the fair trade movement uh, in Spain and in Sweden, in Lund I got in contact with a broader area which is called the ethical economy or fair economy, not only fair trade uh, and that was basically because in, our, in the little fair trade association that I was working as a volunteer uh, we didn't know what to do with our money. We were every day, every week, every month, every year doing activities to improve the working condition of people in a lot of countries uh, for a more uh, justice and ecological economy. And at the end of the month, when we have some money left in the account, we put that money in a normal bank. And then the money that do it that we were fighting to have a better world, in the night it was doing the opposite. So we wanted to know where to put our money. And uh, that was in Sweden in 2005, 2006, when we, in, in a small uh, association in Lund, we, went, we made a study circle to receive input to know about other ethical banks, and then we got to know Jack Bank. Uh, so that was my, my and that, that's where, where I became an uh, active a member and volunteer and, and after that employee at Jack. Uh, well, that was the intro because today I wanted to, to talk about the, the international movement or ethical banks in an international perspective. First of all, uh, I, I have been looking to, to the presentation how to, to give an international perspective and I must say from the beginning that it's mostly an European perspective that I will when I will talk about ethical banks. 
Uh, maybe there are, I will talk about some projects out of Europe, but not much. Uh, so it's not really, really a, an overview of the international perspective. Maybe some of you have uh, comments or questions or want to present some projects uh, outside of Europe or even in Europe that I didn't mention. So we will have time for discussion. I will maybe talk 20, 25 minutes and then a little bit of questions and answers. You are also very welcome to stop me in the middle and ask me something if it's not clear. Uh, but this uh, European perspective on ethical banking that uh, I want to present, uh, I want to start mentioning something that I call like the roots. The roots of the tradition of ethical banking. Uh, because in the last 10, 20, 30 years, there has been a lot of uh, projects uh, promoting another way of doing banking. But that's some of the points that these new projects are rising up. They are not new at all. Uh, and the roots that I want to mention is like the tradition of the saving banks and cooperative banks of the 19th century. Uh, in the 19th century, uh, mainly in Great Britain, but, but only in uh, Germany and France, uh, it started a movement of uh, saving banks, which were uh, the simple task, well, simple but at the same time revolutionary task, was to put banking to serve the people in the local communities. Uh, there were big changes in the society in the 19th century in Europe, um, mostly with the Industrial Revolution. People were leaving the, the countryside, moving to the big cities, and, and then the, their economies were changing a lot from an economy of a subsistence, well, an economy where, where, I want to say subsistence, I don't know in English now, uh, an economy of a, where, where people were producing most of the things that they were using, to an economy where people were moving to the big cities, working in a factory, and then receiving a salary. The need of having a place to put the money were increasing. I mean, more and more people needed banks. But the classical banks, at the beginning of the 19th century, doesn't, they didn't want to have to do with these poor people working in the factories. They asked for a big amount of money to open an account, for example, 10 pounds, in England in the beginning of the 19th century, and lots of people couldn't afford to open an account in a normal bank. Uh, then came this revolutionary concept, which were the saving banks in the local communities, where people could open bank accounts for 30 pence instead of 10 pounds. And uh, this was the big, one of the biggest thing, uh, changes with the saving bank movement. They Fight, they fought financial exclusion. Uh, this, to, fight, to fight the financial exclusion is, for example, what the microcredit movement has been doing in the late, latest 20, 30 years. Uh, so the saving banks were fighting financial exclusion and two other characteristics were they were giving loans to the local and regional economies uh, and the third characteristic, that the profits should stay in the local community. Not they, the profits will not go to the wallets of some rich owners. And, and they, these three key characteristics from the saving banks are mostly what the ethical banks today are trying to reach <coughs> again, somehow. Uh, so, fighting financial exclusion that the, to invest in local or regional projects and that the profits will stay in, will stay in the community. Of course, updated to the 21st century, because it's not only now to invest in local and regional projects, but there is a lot of the social and ecological issues connected with this investment, because we know more about how are we damaging our planet. Um, in, in this three characteristics of the saving banks, well, something important, who were running these saving banks? 
Well, it was the uh, institutions that were already in the local places. There were churches, there were municipalities, there were foundations of some uh, rich people that uh, do, doesn't have uh, daughters or sons and give the money to a foundation. And there were also working unions creating these uh, saving banks. Uh, parallelly, or a little bit after, but uh, also running in the 19th century, started another kind of banks, which some, uh, beside that, these three characteristics of fighting financial exclusion, investing in local projects, and the profits sustaining in the local community, they included another factor. Uh, and this new, uh, this other kind of banks were the cooperative banks. So the cooperative banks also used these three key aspects, but also a new one which was the governance of the project. Uh, it was not the church running the project, for example, the local church, but the people, the users of the bank, deciding together in the cooperative tradition. Uh, what had happened since the 19th century until today? Well, those saving banks that started then, and the cooperative banks that started then, they grew. Uh, some faster, another disappeared, but some of them grew very fast and or, are very big, mostly. And in most of the, uh, these aspects, they uh, left their original uh, goals back. And they turned to be quite similar to the conventional banks. So the needs that they were uh, serving, uh, they are still there because the in, in some, for example, in some European countries, uh, the saving banks are no longer uh, saving banks. For, I have the, in the presentation before, it was an example of Spain with the active democracy. Um, I, I will take the, the example of Spain also with the saving banks. Uh, together with this economical financial crisis of 2010, the government decided to change the laws and to to change the structure of the saving banks. They need to become normal banks. They need to have stakeholders. They need to have profits. So in some countries, the saving banks um, uh, have became really normal banks. And in, uh, in other countries, even if they continue with the statues and the stat guard of the saving banks, they have uh, developed uh, to the, the, their... Uh, their ways of work uh, are very similar to the normal banks. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the traditional saving banks because, uh, in, uh, for example, in Spain there are still or new cooperative banks that are working with ethical principles, but are not the, the, the old saving banks. Uh, well, that was the roots. But what, is, what I think is more interesting to, to see or to talk about is what's, how is the picture today of ethical banking? Because uh, in the literature or in the, in the discourse of ethical banking, there is a, a kind of ethical banks that have somehow, uh, that are the center of the agenda, I would say. And, and those are, I will write some things instead of uh, using, yeah. I'm, I will not write so much, but a little bit. which are eco-social transparent banks, which are the main kind of, and, and the, the typical kind of ethical bank that we are talking today in Europe. When, when somebody mentions an ethical bank, it used to be one of those. It is usually one of those. Eco-social transparent bank. What, why eco-social transparent bank? Well, these are banks that are transparent from starting here, uh, they show in which projects they invest money. And they are eco-social because the projects in which they invest the money follow 
I rule a set of ecological or social criteria, sometimes also cultural criteria. Uh, and this is the biggest group of ethical banks in Europe. Uh, this group of banks are connected through a network called the FBA or FBA, I don't know in English how to say that. Uh, this network, there's, there are members in uh, all of Europe. You see the map here. Uh, in Sweden is uh, Ecobanken, the Swedish bank member in this network. Uh, there are some, uh, for example, in uh, Spain we have Caixa Poyenka, which is an old saving bank that have uh, still uh, st still have the, the ideals of the original saving banks and develop to the 21st century with more ecological and social criteria. Uh, it's very interesting with this uh, FBA movement or FBA network because. It's a really uh, direct way to see why ethical banking is different and why it is uh, working towards a better society because they are allocating money from uh, private people or associations or companies to projects that are changing the world we are living in. And that change is very easy to see when we, in most of those banks, for example in Ecobanking, you take the annual report and see which projects are they financing, where your money is going. It's really easy to see. Uh, at a European level, we can see an atlas. They have made an atlas of good practice, which is a very interesting document, which almost 400 pages, with the projects all around Europe. Uh, I will. This is still loading, but I will show the index because then we can see what kind of projects they are financing. Uh, so these are projects financed by different financial institutions, banks from those uh, countries, from FBA members, and they are in. For example, in this atlas, they have organized it in a recycling, environmental, energies, nature, all those projects, territories, revitalization, service, innovations, housing, tourism. Yeah, so there is different um, tracks in the economy that uh, very directly we can see that putting the money in those banks we are transforming the reality in which we live. Uh, and uh, transparency is a basic to, to know that we are working ecologically and socially. If we don't have transparency, that's not, you cannot uh, solve the other points. Um, as a, I now that I'm showing this, I want to show uh, another web page because and, and these are the, the banks in uh, FBA are in this uh, this eco social transparent banks. The, these are the actors that are actively changing the financial uh, sphere in Europe. Uh, but a very important important movement working parallelly uh, is the, the the movement that is observing what the conventional banks are doing. So these are already financing money, uh, financing projects, but uh, there's another interesting project that I wanted to show, which is not uh, financing anything, but which is showing what the normal banks are doing. This uh, movement is called bandtrack.org. There are very lots of organizations in, uh, in all around the world, members in bandtrack, and this is an, a huge database of the bad business of the normal banks. If you want to know something bad about what the normal banks are doing, you go here and check in which area you want to know, or in which bank. We want to know country, okay. Maybe something from Sweden. There will be some, yes, there is something from Sweden, we can check. 
and uh, so yeah, picture. Ah, no, there's a lot of things here. Documents, do videos. What's happening here? So there is very uh, specific information from the different banks in all around Europe. Uh, I will. S I see this uh, work as a, uh, a mirror of this one. I mean, this work is doing the actively transformation, and this work from uh, bank track people and uh, organizations are showing what is bad with the uh, with the current uh, normal banking system. So only with this, uh, maybe working actively here helps people to get motivation to, to change to those banks. Um, in Sweden, there is no organization in Sweden, member in Bankrupt, as far as I know, at least not in this webpage, but there is a very interesting organization which some people here are member from the Socken Bank, uh, which have, maybe you have already seen uh, this big bank, uh, um, like uh, information, document where you can compare what? Ah, yes, the, the camera. Yes, here it is, Bitbank. Here you can read about the different conditions uh, the, of the Swedish banks, from the salary of the CEO to the, uh, if they have uh, sustainable savings or if they have a connection with the uh, Scattered paradise. Now I forgot the English. Tax havens. Uh, so you can uh, check this uh, in the certain bank from Essen. Well, that was about eco social transfer in banks and the mirror, which I see as a mirror, which is looking what what but the bad guys are doing. Uh, but there is more tradition or tracks in the ethical banking because it's very difficult to to say or to put a stamp in which is ethical or not. Uh, there is a, another tradition which is the interest free interest free banks. And here I write the Jack tradition and the I want to mention also the we are we're from Switzerland. Uh, well I start with Jack. Uh, then Eric talked in the morning about the uh, Jack in Sweden. Uh, the Jack tradition of uh, interest free banking started in the 1930s after the economical depression of 1929, people in Denmark started, saw the need of a, a new currency because uh, they had uh, the same tools, the same uh, working conditions, the same energy than before, but there were no Danish crones. So they thought, okay, we are the same people, why don't we can, we can continue so as usual? So they create their own money and, and parallelly they create a bank to put their own money. But very fast, this new money was uh, forbidden by the Danish state, but they continued with this uh, new bank. And a key concept in that new bank is that interests were not allowed about among members. Uh, and this uh, new bank in Denmark in the 30s, Jack, was working without interest among members. Uh, in the 60s, uh, people in Sweden got inspiration and started a new, a new project in Sweden, which is the nowadays Jack Members Bank in Sweden. Uh, and uh, it has uh, grown, especially in the last 10 years, and uh, created new projects in, uh, in other countries, like in, uh, in Germany, a project called OZB. Uh, in uh, Finland, a project called Jack Finland. And in Italy, a project called Jack Italia. Uh, all of those projects with different characteristics and financially independent with each other. We, we, 
we collaborate with information and and uh, know-how, but we don't. We are not using the same money. Uh, something uh, and another project. Uh, when I was talking, that is mostly in Europe that I mentioned, but there is a out of Europe project inspired by Jack, which is in Kenya, called Ogul. I write the name here. Uh, and Ogul is a very interesting mix of the Jack project and uh, the tradition of uh, long circles of the uh, culture of the, of the people traditionally in Kenya. And, but they have established a similar system of uh, we have a system in the Swedish Jack with saving points and they have established a similar system in Kenya, much simpler, but with the same principles. Very briefly, to comment how the, um, the different jacks are working, uh, the main aspect in common is that we are working without interest. But then, after that, we have uh, found different uh, ways of doing that, and different uh, uh, legal frameworks to do that. In Denmark, in Sweden, we are already uh, official banks. We have bank license. We are we are covered by the financial supervisory institution like Finansis Hunen in Sweden. Uh, but for example, in Germany, the OZB they have they are not so big and they do not want to be so big. They do not want to have bank license, but they want to 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 offer savings and loans to the members. So they have found another way to do it. Uh, another legal framework that works in Germany, that if they uh, have less than 100 loans, then they can continue without bank license. And uh, I like a lot of the German project. Uh, they, another interesting thing is that they do not want to work with employees, so they have, uh, they have looked to their system and see, okay, how many we can divide all the work that is needed to be done to have this bank running. It's like 17 uh, tasks, 17 packets with uh, tasks to do. So members in the bank, they receive tasks to do. You became a member, you pay the membership fee, and you receive things to do if you want to be an active member. Uh, that's something, uh, and it's working for them because when they became bigger than an amount of people and an amount of loans, they create a new one. So now there is an OCB in Stuttgart, OCB in Bonn, and OCB in Fribourg, and so on. So they are somehow flying under radar, not banking license, non, no, not employees, but giving a service to the members. They are sending a loan money to each other without interest. Something interesting between these two uh, movements is that, at least in Sweden, they are at some point merging with each other. Uh, today, in Ecobanken, which is, <laughs> is completely in this tradition, in, in Ecobanken it's possible to save money without interest. And then you offer better conditions for the people taking loans, thanks that you reject your interest. You say, I don't want to have interest, as, uh, uh, but, but then some projects will have better conditions because of this decision of me. Uh, in Jack, which is in this tradition, we are, we, you can do the opposite way. Uh, normally, the, the loans in Jack, by default, they are not transparent. But if you want to have transparent, if, if you want to know exactly where your money is going in Jack, you can choose it. Then you can choose to put your money in a special project we call Support Savings Loans. Spa, um, no, how do you yeah, Support Savings. It's not spar. Yeah, thanks, Nate. The Support Savings Loans. And then you direct your money to the project that you want to support. So there is, it's interesting that these two traditions are not. Uh, yeah, well, they, they, they can merge if the people that are here and here want to. So, and something also interesting, most of those 
banks, well, in the interest-free banks, as far as I know, all of, the, all of them are uh, cooperatives or associations. In the eco-social transparent banks, there are some of them very important in Europe that are not associations, not cooperatives. They are companies. Uh, and I'm thinking mostly a big one, which is Triodos. Triodos is a bank from the Netherlands, which is uh, very big for being an ethical bank. And they have uh, offices in, in the Netherlands, but also in Spain and in other European countries. Uh, and they are a company with, with the stakeholders. And it's close. You became uh, a customer, but you cannot become an owner, or not so easily. Uh, also interesting that, well, I have already mentioned, not all of those banks are banks. I mean, they work as banks, but not all of them, neither in this uh, category or in this one, have the bank license. Uh, but with or without, without bank license, they are working in the different levels. Uh, something that I've written here, this, this weird, is somebody have heard about them, maybe? Uh, weird is a it's an old project from Switzerland, from the 30s also, like the Danish Jack. And they, they, they started somehow like the Danish Jack, with a complementary currency and with a bank. In, and in the bank they put the complementary currency. But uh, this complementary currency is still alive and is still working. So Weir is, our, is today a bank and they are uh, giving them a currency the weird currency, uh, and you can uh, receive a loan in uh, Swedish money or in weird money. And the weird money can be used in a, in a network of companies and uh, private people that are using the weird money. Uh, they were interest-free at the beginning up to the 50s. In the 50s, they decided as a cooperative that they were, that they didn't want to continue being interest-free. But they continue, they are in the tradition of, of the saving banks, of investing the, mo the money locally and regionally. Maybe not very strict with the eco social issues, but quite somehow. They are not investing the money in, uh, in funds that are going uh, to nobody knows where. Because they are very connected with the people that is using the complementary currency. So it's still very with the roots in the reality. So if you are curious, you can read more about the weird. I think they are really interesting. Uh, but I go on a little bit. We have, wow, it's going fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I wanted to mention, because as uh, I said, ethics or not ethics is a very broad area. And uh, sometimes it's connected with different religions. Uh, and I want to mention among ethical banks, that depending for, for some of, of people is very ethics and for some not, but the Islamic banks because in the Muslim tradition or Islamic tradition uh, there is uh, it is for, forbidden to use interest uh, it is also forbidden in the Christian tradition but it's not very use this people is using it anyway uh, and it has been also used anyway in the Islamic tradition but since the 70s when this uh, oil crisis in 1973 and the, the countries uh, producing oil in the um, yeah, Saudi Arabia and countries around uh, got lots of money because of the higher prices in the oil and they also wanted, they started to, to think that maybe we should use that money in a way that is according with the, with the Muslim tradition, and that means without interest. So in that moment started uh, a movement, or, well, it was not a grassroots movement, it was very, very from the top, from uh, rich people that still wanted to do money with money, but in another way. 
and it's a big difference. Uh, I will briefly present what is Islamic finance because it's happening a lot uh, in uh, mostly in the Arabic countries, but also in Great Britain, and maybe it came to Sweden if there is some re change regulations in laws. And it's basically in a normal Western conventional bank, uh, if a company wants a loan, a company, for example, that wants to to, to start uh, a, a bakery needs a loan, and, uh, and the bank gives the loan to the company to start the bakery. Uh, and the bakery signs in the contract that they will repay the loan and pay the interest. If the bakery is doing good, they will have no problem. They will repay the loan, pay the interest, and they maybe will have a profit, hopefully for them. That's the normal bank. What is the Islamic bank doing? The Islamic bank, here came the bakery, they want a loan, and then the bank becomes co-owner of the bakery. If the bakery is doing profit, then the profit will be divided between the bakery and the bank. But if the bakery is doing bad and have no profit, or if the bakery is going bankrupt, the bank will not receive a single crown. They will lose the money. So the bank shares the profits and the risk. In this system, it is still possible that a rich person is getting richer without working if this person is investing in the right companies. But they are risking the money in another way. I mean, much more than in the normal banks. Uh, it was shown that in the financial crisis 2008-2009, the Islamic banks, that were already quite big, they survived the crisis much better because they were used to invest in good businesses. Because if they do not invest in good businesses, they go bankrupt. So they are much more resilient than the five minutes, okay, than the conventional banks. But which is what is ethics for Islamic banks? Because well, one thing is that that is not allowed to receive interest, only to, to share profits and losses. But then they have criteria which are very, very connected with the Muslim religion. I mean, you cannot invest if you are going to, sh to sell alcohol, or if you are going to, to sell uh, pork sausages, or things connected with this specific religion. Uh, yeah, that were the, the three categories that I wanted to present. And uh, we have five minutes for questions, because I talked too much. But maybe, yeah, it's enough. Or Some comment or question? Yes. So these Islamic banks, uh, do they all, only accept then uh, requests from companies who the, that the owners are Muslims, or are they also accepting like Christians or and, or even worse, often for Islamic people is someone who, for instance, does not follow any religion? Is that including in the criteria to get a loan from such a bank? Uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the big ones that I've uh, read more about in, in the Great Britain, they are not asking for the religion of the person asking for the loan. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the business is what the business is doing what is interesting? Okay. Uh, I must say also private people is taking loans in the, in the Islamic banks for buying, for example, apartments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there, the risk there is if the, that the price in the apartment goes down, then both have losing the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. In Osata B, uh, Osa B um, you said that uh, there are 17 package work packages. Is it one package per person, or and is there a special benefit if you do if you're an active member and you work? Uh, yeah, these 70 packages are our task to do to run the, these uh, small s banks. Uh, they are, uh, as in, in some of the new ones at least, uh, there's sometimes the same person doing different packages. And uh, as far as I know, they have no benefits for doing that. They have no uh, special revenues or special. But um, because they didn't mention that in the presentation that I was hearing, but maybe they have and they didn't consider that it was worth mentioning. Hmm. 
But the good thing is that it's like a start kit. They made those 17 criteria. I said 17, I'm almost here. It was 17 or 21, I don't know. I have these two numbers in my head. But um, so they have a start kit. So that if a person in Berlin uh, called to Stuttgart and asked, how do we start with the OCP? They said, here's the 17 tasks that you need to do. Find 17 people or uh, a person that wants to do the 17 task. Hmm. What is sort of the, uh, the party political uh, response in, in countries? Are, are politicians or parties also trying to, to push for a kind of a better playing field for this kind of bands? Mm. In fact, I would say that at least in the European Union, uh, no. I mean, the, the requirements to, to get a bank license have become harder and harder since the crisis in 2008. And uh, with some rules that maybe are prepared to, to be more strict with the bigger banks, but when you put those rules, and the small banks also have to follow those rules, then it's almost impossible for a small bank to follow with all those rules and reporting and all that. So there is not a good framework or a good uh, uh, legislation for small banks because those alternative banks are mostly small. So it will be needed a legislation for, for small banks specifically and then more, more of those banks will flourish, I would say. That's my view a little bit. Thank you. <laughs>